Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's do some hotel morning routine. And let's go through and look at a few tips and tricks on just daily grind, as well as going through and doing a little bit of account resource management. So I'm gonna just start off with my logins, just gonna go through the beginnings of my day, pick up my little glowy orb that fell out of the tree here. And we are going to talk a little bit today about how to uh, probably give your account that first juice up, that first steroid that you need to start really pushing through the game. It's gonna come down to a few things. There's going to be the aspect of leveling up your character. Uh, this is fine, this is not against a weak element. And this challenge becomes much, much easier as the time grows on. This is just a party I already had put together. It's not a strong element against the element. When you, depending on how new you are into the game, when you tap on the little element at the top left corner, it will give you the element affinity list. So case in point, water is weak to wind, wind is weak to fire, fire is weak to water. So those are your, that's your triad of elements. And then dark is weak against light and light is weak against dark. So let's speed this up a little bit. There we go. All right. <clears throat> and so when you're building your teams, especially for when you're just able to bump into something and just absolutely obliterate it, that's not a problem. You can just do whatever element you want, whatever element is strongest. Uh, oftentimes from what I've seen, dark and light tend to be the strongest elements because they don't have the same degree of opposites in the game. If you're playing a water team in the game and you are going up against a wind team, then it's going to, it's gonna hurt. It's not gonna go very well for you. And if you're playing against a dark team with a light team, yeah, those two are opposites to each other. Ooh, I got a whole lot of memoirs here from farming. So the blazing event is still going on. Let me actually take a look at this real quickly. So let's go through first and look at our notices. Okay, maintenance for May 19th. Mm, let's see. Okay, okay. You'll not be able to log in. So what period is this? 17 to 20 Pacific. All right, so that is five to eight PM. And that will probably be leading up to the release of a new uh, block of content. So that'll be exciting. We'll have more gems to farm, more gems to pull on Final Fantasy 14, yay. Okay, and so the next thing, let's look at some of these other notices we've gotten. Now, real quickly, I'm not gonna go into too many details about this. But what we do have is we have a few things break down here. We've, uh, Nier has now introduced a weekly summons. So depending on what character you're chasing, uh, this is from the standard pull, you can go after these characters and they have a boosted drop rate on the banner. I actually don't know what the exact numbers on the boosted drop rate are, but some of these characters are pretty good. The bloody weapon, Noel, is pretty good. Uh, or bloodless weapon. I actually don't have the bloody weapon. I only have the abstract, abstract weapon and the bloodless weapon. And I have the abstract traveler for Argo, which I've never done anything with. Argo is by far and away my least favorite character to use in this game. And it may not be deserving. But, okay, let's go ahead and go back out of this. So that's just something you can do if you're trying to build a specific character, which if you're trying to get that little bit of extra power out of that character, that may not be a bad way to do it. Now, <clears throat> let's go over here to the subjugation season two. I don't remember this happening for season one, but this actually gives a complete breakdown for what the cursed God is going to be doing, which is the giant Kaiju type boss that you fight and he even makes kaiju noises which is awesome i love that he makes godzilla sounds when the battle starts and when he's transitioning between teams i think that's just such a great little touch and what we have here is we have for each of the elements a breakdown so on the tab to the left which is it's broken down by waves so wave one wave two wave three so let's look at fire here wave one key notes for each wave uses skills which strikes party and increases its own defense Okay, and then recommended skill loadout, attack increasing skills, skills with high damage. 
that's going to be a given for anything subjugation because it is a damaged race. You're trying to do as much damage to it as possible to force it into that that uh, that orb where the chain modifier is capped at 999 and you're just trying to damage it as much as possible during that break. So if you can't break it, there are four difficulties to the subjugation battle. And what you do is you pick the difficulty that is best for you. So if you can't break it <clears throat> at difficulty four, then go back to difficulty three and try and break it there. And if you can break it in every wave, that is ideally what you're going for. You're still trying to push up into the next difficulty. And ideally you do want to land in difficulty four because it has a 700% score bonus versus I believe a 350% score bonus for the wave three or for the difficulty three, but that is ideally what you want to be doing. So it does give you a lot of flexibility and I've done all four of the difficulties. Difficulty one ain't that hard. And so if you have an account power, team power of about the 80,000 that I mentioned in my prior video, that should be enough to get you through that. And that should be enough to get you a pretty good score with that. And what you wanna do is you wanna start building those scores. And when you go to subjugation every day when you log in, you just want to do this. So this is here. So I'm just gonna show you what this looks like. And if you're happy with your score, and sometimes this is better to do because sometimes you wanna be doing your experimenting without collecting the rewards. You can go over here to subjugation battles and then you see how it says at the bottom there receive now i just went through this real quickly last night because i didn't have time to plan out my team so it's basically the exact same teams i had before and the scores are pretty close to what i had before and so you can see this right here uh i did not do very well on light and my dark is not at the sss yet so we'll just go here i'll click receive and then you can click confirm and it gives you the rewards. You don't even have to go into the match. So if you've already beaten the subjugation battle for the specific element once before, you can just click claim, receive, boom, got it. And I'm just gonna go through and do these real quickly. Okay, so on and so forth. And now I don't have to worry about those for the rest of the day. Now I can take this at my own leisure. So that's a good thing to do because again, you're getting materials that are useful for crafting, enhancement materials for your characters, and you're also getting those bronze, silver, and gold coins. Not too many. You're getting a small energy pot, you're getting some gold. It's all around a good thing to do every day. So when you get the chance, go into subjugation, build those teams. It won't be pretty at first. It's gonna take a lot of fine tuning to make a subjugation battle work, but go in there, at least get through it, and at least just collect those rewards every day because those rewards do build up, especially Sunday when the rewards roll over and you get the bulk rewards. Okay, so there's that. Now, let's see, what do we do next? Sometimes I like checking in on my arena just to see where I'm at. I'm still doing pretty good there. Now that score will, my score, I'll get bumped out of the top 100 as soon as the weekend comes and I'll have to fight my way back into top 100. I don't, I think the highest I've gotten is rank 22 or 26. And I did that once, it was a grind. I just don't have the time or patience to do that every week. So I did it once, it looks great on my character profile, yay. But I try and break into top 100 every week just so that I could get a little, a little extra reward. And it doesn't take a ton of work. It's, a lot of it is just hunting for teams. I'll show you what that looks like right now. <laughs> Okay, so we've got some teams. My attack power is 257. Now, attack power doesn't mean everything. Attack power is just basically how the game is calculating your raw stats. The things that are important, typically in arena, now there's, there's kind of two ways that I see people going. And there's extremely fast, where the entire team acts before your team. And then there's really tanky, where you allow the other team to act before you and while all of your abilities charge up, and then when they've exhausted all of their abilities and you're still all alive, now you get to build that combo. Now you get to go out. So again, this team is not optimized. I don't have my memoirs optimized over here. I don't have them in, pair, in sets. And this is just something I kind of slapped together again, but it seems to be working celebratory gunman demos is amazing because he increases your defense i'll show you this right here 
this is a character I actually did chase because it's such a cool character. We got this right here. Attack down by 50% for the entire enemy team for 45 seconds and the defense up for your team by 50% for 45 seconds. And that happens right at the beginning of battle. So right when he gets a turn, boom, that thing fires off. So my Gale is my fastest at 1650. I could have her much faster than that. I could have her go over 1900. And then she's lapping characters, but I'm sacrificing a lot on the attack and the crit rate side, even though her crit rate isn't very high. And then I have Lavania, who is my beast. I, the dude has over 100,000 attack power just by himself. He's just an absolute monster. And I actually do have him in a partial set, a few other things. I have him using his own weapon, which may or may not be optimal. His agility is okay. He does get lapped by characters, but I can show you what that looks like in an actual fight. <laughs> and I try and go for teams that, okay, so we have, now he is resistant against light, but he is using a dark weapon. So that sort of counteracts. Now I don't have his, Okay, so if we go over here, I could even lose a little bit of agility to put on this guy right here. Oh, I don't lose any agility. Now this also gives me, this is a nice curse god weapon, Dim Luminous Guard. It increases my dark damage by 20% and my light damage taken down by 20%, which is fantastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and equip that guy. I don't know why I didn't have it equipped before. I think I just really liked the feel weapon and I was playing around with it a little bit. And we are going to switch this companion to a light resistant companion, which is Ye Grimoire. And we've got water resistance, we got light resistance, and let's go up against this guy. You never know with a Lars team. Lars teams are powerful. If Lars is built right, that sucker just melts you. So let's see what we got here. Let's kill him first. And I'm gonna slow down the speed a little bit just so that I don't have to be complete. Wow. Oh, that Gale. Ooh, ooh, this is gonna go badly for me. Yeah, that went super duper duper bad for me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was terrible, terrible time. You know what, I bumped into this team before and this team wrecks me every time. It is so fast, and I don't know what that guy has done to that Gale, but she is so doggone powerful. She probably has one of those sets on that gives a big increase to attack power. Jess Brack. All right, whoever you are, Jess Brack, good on you. I'm not fighting you again. That was awful. <laughs> okay, so this is something you can look for. This is the smart way to do it. When you're building up over the course of the week, you find a team, because people will leave their teams, um, to a one character or just a low power team so that you could farm off them. And it's just a courtesy that people do in arena and you can just go through and wreck them, get a few easy points. I get my score back. It's a nice, easy way to stay up and also a way to get those arena coins, which is very convenient. Those arena coins are one of the ways that you get those black pearls for enhancing your weapons. And they are super duper 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 rare here we go hey good luck okay I'll, I'll end with this one but this is just an example of what you can do there will be people who leave behind their teams with low power so that you could farm off them and that is a very nice consideration on their part just so that uh, everybody can get a little bit of extra coins over the course of the week and then they put their big defenses back on on the weekend while they're trying to climb up in the ranks so it's a nice little courtesy okay so we're gonna go ahead and leave that. Now let's talk about a few little aspects of the account characters. With the Final Fantasy XIV collaboration, Gale now out, let's take a look at her versus A2, which was another limited unit that we have. So we're gonna go over here to our characters. And first we're gonna look at A2 because I've got her maxed out. Okay, so a few things you'll notice here. Her critical rate is at 30%, that's nice. There aren't a whole lot of characters that have built-in 20% bonus to critical rate in their kit. And so, let's go over here. Let's do a long press on her, actually. Get different information. I don't know why they do it this way. But if we go over here to her bonus, this is something that comes, by the way, from 
those character quests that I showed you in my previous video. Okay. So these bonuses come from being leveled up to a certain degree. Okay. So this is what you get every time you level. So 70 is the cap for the first tier, and then you get your advanced handbooks or your duplicate character. You go up to 75, 80, 85, etc. And these are the stats that she's getting every time she bumps up, which is nice. But the Mythic Slab, to be perfectly honest, completely overrides this. You are getting much larger bonuses from each time you upgrade a Mythic Slab tab. Let's go over here to rank 10, though. Okay. Now, this is something that you can pick up just by doing those character quests. So this is the character quest one, and this is the character rank, rank 10. And this is gained by just using your characters in battles. So you put your character in your team and you run them through a bunch of missions. You can either use the skip tickets, which I use only occasionally. I actually like hoarding some of my resources and I'll just let the game play out in lieu of doing the skip tickets most of the time. But if I really want to get something fast, I'll play the skip tickets. And that's what I save them for, that time that I just want to bump through something very quickly. But you'll notice here we've got these, and these are nice because these are percentage bonuses. These are not fixed bonuses, which work better with the Mythic Slab because the Mythic Slab is adding to your base stats. And so when you have a fully flushed out Mythic Slab board, um, it increases your stats tremendously and those are the base stats those are not the stats being provided by the equipment the memoirs or the companions those are the three other sources of stats uh, that you can gain from and those do not multiply off of your um, off of this this is purely base stats so we got one percent attack two percent that is a additive so hit points 1500 etc etc so this is nice now Let's go ahead and look at this right here. We've got Ambush. Critical rate up by 20%. That is in her character abilities. And then we've got Vigor. Attack up by 20%. Okay, good. Bludgeoning Multi-Strike. Now this is what makes A2 such a hard, hard, hard hitter. First of all, it is a gauge level C, which means it recharges really fast. It's one of the faster recharging abilities. That's fantastic. 130% damage times four, so decent. Your EX characters, uh, like Levania, for example, is, I believe, or actually Mocha Joe, I think he's uh, five or 200% times five, I think. It's something, like, let me double check that real quickly. Two hundred percent times five, and it increases by 20% uh, the lower your hit points. So if you get this guy close to zero, he's melting stuff. Lavani is another really good one. This is 200% times five and decreases defense by 30% for 30 seconds. This is a really good ability and this is one of the reasons, this is one of the things that makes EX Lavani so doggone powerful. He has a defense break in there which increases the damage of your entire team and he's got 200% times five. So keep that in consideration when we go back to A2 here. All right, let's actually do a long press. All right, let's go back over here. Okay. So, back on the ability, 130% times four, deal an extra 40% damage on critical hit. Okay, this is where the damage starts piling up. And if we go over to our loadout here, and we look at, for example, let's just look at quests. Let's go over here, yeah, mix is fine. Okay, let's just go to this right here. So let's take a look at Lavania here. Now, I could push up my critical hit rate a little higher. I usually have a memoir in my loadout that boosts my critical hit rate. Or sorry, memoir, I keep saying that. And I made that mistake in my last video, companion. These guys up here at the top right, these are your companions, not memoirs. The memoirs are the things below them. Okay, let's not make that mistake again. Your companion, there's the fire one, right over here. And these, by the way, the companions are farmed from the story quests. All you have to do to get every single companion sans a few, which are limited. There's uh, the Moogle right now going on for the Final Fantasy XIV event that is limited. So after the event is over, you will not be able to get that companion anymore until a Final Fantasy XIV rerun. Same here with the one that I'm using, Grimoire Weiss. This was limited as well. Same with this dragon here. This was limited as well. And same with another dragon for the Drakengard collaboration. A few of these are really good. 
Grimoire Weiss, really awesome. Okay, but let's go over here and I'm gonna show you this guy, which was the fire one. And we have this ability right here. Deals 340% damage and increases critical hit rate by 30% for 60 seconds. That, that companion right there is typically why I build my teams at 70% when I'm just going through normal missions because I can choose to fire that off really when I need to slap down some damage, and then I'm able to build up my other stats, i.e. my crit damage, which is A2, very important. So my crit damage, because she's doing an increased 40% on top of the 219% say that I had for Lavania there, so that is a lot of extra damage and that's why she hit so hard. Now let's go back over here to the new character we've got during the collaboration. We're gonna go over here to Final Fantasy XIV, Noelle, who in my opinion is very comparable to A2 in a lot of ways. She's a similar kind of unit. A couple of differences though. If you look at her attack here, four, nine, six, seven, and that's at level 70, by the way. And then you look at A2, 6,050. Okay, at level 90. Now, remember, her attack is gonna go up quite a bit. Her attack is gonna go up over 7,000. So that right there is going to be a big bump in power. And then we've got her ability, which is more important. As a mythic slab, the ability damage modifiers are now more important in a lot of ways than the raw stats because we can pick up the raw stats from all over the place. So first of all, she has vigor and that's gonna go up to 25%. So she's already got higher boost, just raw boost there than A2 and this guy. 120% times five, okay? So it's not 130% times four. Critical damage increases by 60% and increases attack by 15% for 30 seconds. This is huge. This sucker, when this is fully, when she is fully leveled up, is going to do so much damage. I mean, she's gonna blow stuff up. So this goes back to the point. When you're first starting out, and when you're first trying to push through the earlier game contract uh, content, i.e. the dungeons, because that's where you farm your memoirs from. Hey, I got right that time. So you're farming your memoirs, and that's a big boost to your power. If I go over here to, let's go to a loadout, and let's just take a look at my Noel over here. Okay. All right, so I've got her at 86% and 194%. Now, that's gonna bump up 10% as soon as I unlock her level 75 because she has a passive ability that increases the entire group's crit rate. And I was wrong on this one as well because I wasn't reading it didn't have it right in front of me, but increases the whole group's rate by 10%, which is great for building your team because then you don't have to focus on the memoirs, for example, that have, oh, I don't have crit rate on this one as a primary. I have crit damage because I really want to bring out that extra power and crit damage. If you've got high crit rate and good attack, crit damage is one of the single most powerful stats that you can add to your character because, again, whenever you crit, you are increasing your overall damage by 25% just from this memoir alone. And then it's got a few other stats in there which are useful. And this secondary ability is also very useful. If you have a set of two, crit rate is up by 10%. If you have a set of three, crit rate is up by 15%. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility there. These memoirs, again, huge power creep. And this companion, look at that right there. Hit points, 10,000. Attack, 1,000. Defense, 800. And it's giving you, in addition to that, your light damage for your whole group increases by 20%. Now these companions are not stackable, so you can only have one at a time offering a beneficial ability and one at a time offering a negative ability to the enemy. So if we go over here, we're more wise, which I told you about, void shutdown. This decreases dark damage taken by 20%. This is hugely important when you're building your team. You want to decrease the damage that the other that the enemy team is doing to you and you want to increase that your dam the damage that you're doing to them. And then the third the third memoir becomes kind of a toss up. If you need healing, you put in something like the the Moogle there because he heals you 30%, but it can only happen once per battle. If you want that extra crit rate steroid, an extra attack steroid or a few other things like that, 
you put in a companion that when it fires off at ability, it, it gives you that extra, that extra boost. Okay. And so then we're going to go over here to the quests again. Now, these guys right over here in the subquests, after you've completed the main story, okay, you're going to do it. There's going to be three settings. There's going to be normal, hard, and very hard. And as you progress through the story and unlock the different difficulties, I just say, go through on normal, finish it all. By the time you get through everything on normal, you should be able to go through, and if not do most of it on hard, a good chunk of it. And then you just work through the story as you go. And as you build up that one carry character, this is the, this is the cool thing about this. When you're first building your account, all you need is one very powerful character. So all you need is one super carry, like a Noel, or like an A2, or like plenty of other characters in this game which have high attack. You get rewards for every event for your Mythic Slab. You just start dumping Mythic Slab into that character, building them up a little bit because you only really need one carry for most of the early content. And then you start enhancing their weapons, whether they be three star or four star weapons, you start enhancing their weapons because the weapons add a good chunk of stats and you start clearing through the content. And then what you find yourself doing is you can have one carry and two spares basically. And so we'll go over here to character quests. Now, when you unlock a character, you unlock their character quests. When you unlock this, you also unlock their dark memory as well. This is something that we will have to go into a fair bit more explanation about because it is not very well explained in the game. And uh, there are resources online. There are plenty of resources. If you just want to skip ahead and Google dark memory, there are efficient ways. I won't call them efficient, but there are more efficient ways to go ahead and get those dark memories, seen at the brilliance and a few other things farmed. I'm not gonna dwell on that for too long, but if you're going to be building a list uh, that you wanna prioritize, start with the basic story, go through, build one character up super strong, okay? Get that character built up, get their weapons, get their memoirs, and again, these are the memoir dungeons right here. And you can go through these at your leisure. And if you get a strong carry, you will be surprised at how quickly you can progress through some of these. Now, I believe starting at floor eight is where you start getting your four star memoirs. And those are the ones you really wanna chase. So if you can make it up to floor eight, you're doing really, really well. And then you can progress from there. You're going to look for memoirs with different abilities. There's gonna be different sets. These last two dungeons, you don't have to worry about them. These are dungeons for the arena. Okay, so don't worry about farming those. This guy is probably one of the best because it has your crit rate, it has your crit damage, it has your attack percentage and a few other increase set increases that you really want to be chasing in the early game. And if you just can't do any of them, the Dynast is fairly easy to get through, has some great sets in there, and you can do it. So we're just going to go ahead and leave it there for today. That's a little bit of tips and tricks, a little bit of uh, rambling and going through my day and we will just leave it at that um hope everyone's having a great time playing and i hope you have great luck on your uh, great luck on your pulls and